In both SolidWorks and Creo Parametric, you can create mechanisms. Those are assemblies that have components that are capable of motion. In an earlier video, like two or three years ago, I showed how to create a slider connection in Creo Parametric. That is a component with one translational degree of freedom. Let's take a look at how to do the same thing in SolidWorks, and then I'll remind you how to do it in Creo Parametric. First, though, I want to give a big shout out to Thompson Linear for their models. They make their CAD models available on their website. I highly recommend that you check it out, thompsonlinear.com. Okay, so I've got this linear actuator open on the computer screen. You can see it has a bunch of components. I just applied a couple colors to distinguish between them. To make things easier to select, I'm going to pick two of the components, right mouse click and choose isolate. So those are the only two that I see. And again, I want one translational degree of freedom for the rod end. And so, first off, when I brought this into SolidWorks, you'll notice that this component, the one that's supposed to be able to move, has an F in parentheses next to it. That indicates that it is fixed. In order to allow it to move, I'm going to right mouse click and hold and choose float. And now it has the dash in parentheses, meaning that it is under constraint. So to define the motion that I want, I'm going to add mates to this model. And let's go to the mate command. And here it opens up the property manager for it. I'm going to select this cylindrical surface and then pick this other cylindrical surface. And right now we have the concentric mate. That is good. Let's hit the check mark for that first one. And for this actuator, I don't want the rod end to be able to rotate. Let me go to the little eyeball icon for hiding and showing items. I'm going to hide and show the primary planes. And for the next selection, let's select this plane here. And then let's go to, I'm going to expand this inside of here. Oh, that's not actually the one that I want. Let me clear the selections. Let me go in the tree. Let me expand this one. And let me choose the front plane out of the tree in the graphics area. And then expand this one. And I think it should be the same plane in that one. That is good. And here we are getting suggested a coincident mate. That's what I want. Let's hit the check mark. And so now we have one rotational degree of freedom left. Let's collapse the tree. I don't need to see it anymore. And let's also turn off the display of our primary planes. But even though it has the one rotational degree of freedom, I want to put some limits on the range of motion. So let's go to the advanced mates. And underneath the advanced mates, we have something called a limit distance or a limit mate. And so I can click on this one and let's select our different references. Let me, oops, if I mess up moving around on the computer screen, it's because I use way too many different CAD programs. Let's select this surface and then select, oops, had it there for a second. Let me get. Again, pardon my awkwardness, that surface. And so we've got the two different surfaces selected. And for the minimum distance, I'm going to use a value of zero. I happen to know that this should be able to extend about 20 inches, which is about 500 millimeters. So let's enter that value for the limit mate and hit the check mark and collapse the tree again. Let's hit the check mark again to get out of the mates command and now we can oh actually to get out of isolate let's choose exit isolate and so now i have the other components visible and also if i want to see the motion let's pick on the component i can go to move component and then drag it and so here you can see it through its range of motion so that's how you get the one translational degree of freedom. Let's hit the check mark. And now that we've seen that in SolidWorks, let's jump over to Creo Parametric. All right, 
here I have the same model. Let's go about doing the same thing. So I've got the rod end over here. Let's edit the definition of that component. And when I imported this, it automatically got a fixed constraint. I can right click on that and choose delete in order to get rid of it. If I was not in edit definition, you can right mouse click on a fixed component and choose unfixed. And so now we've got all our different degrees of freedom available. Instead of adding three individual mates, I can go to the connection type drop down list. And these are our mechanism connections. These are different constraint sets. And for one translational degree of freedom, I'm going to choose a slider connection. And let's pick a cylindrical surface here and a cylindrical surface here for the axis alignment to get rid of the rotation let me turn on my datum plane display lots of stuff in here let me grab this plane front from that component front from that component over there let's unclutter the screen and that is everything in order to define the one translational degree of freedom. If you take a look at the 3D dragger, the red arrow is still available, indicating the available degree of freedom. But let's say I want to limit the amount of motion. To do that, I will go to translation, and then I can pick the different references I want to use for my zero. So for example, let's select this surface and that surface over there. Right now, the distance is 0.44 apart from each other, and I can specify the minimum limit. I'll enter in a value of zero. And then for the maximum limit, for some reason, I think this might actually be in inches. Let me enter a value of 20, and then we can test the motion. Yep, that is good for the motion. And so now I'm happy. I can hit the check mark. And if I want to test the motion when I'm not in edit definition, I can go to the drag components icon and test the range of it. So there you have a quick and simple comparison of defining a mechanism connection for a translational degree of freedom in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshow.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.